So I'm here with uh, Chris Brogan, uh, I, I want to say a good friend, a friend of mine, and Chris wrote The Impact Equation. Now, if you haven't bought this book, I highly recommend it. What, the one thing I like about this book is that it basically puts a handle on very difficult concepts. So I'm always thinking, well, how can nonprofits create more awareness? You know, it has to do with the content. It also has to do with the community. A lot of these things work together. How do they all connect with each other and how does it work? So actually, Chris and Julian Smith have created this incredible formula that really gets into contrast, reach, exposure, articulation, trust, and echo, and how they all function together. It's super valuable if you're trying to get a handle on all this confusing stuff, you know, about being a human being, about your actual supporters that are human beings, and the internet and how it all works together. I, I highly recommend it. So um, that's a... That's a long introduction. <laughs> so, Chris, I have you here because I wanted to talk about a specific email that you sent out because I'm on your email list. And it mentions this concept of sidewalk or wait, did we want to talk about retention rates? We can do all of it. Okay. We can do all, <laughs> all of right. it. Let's, let's start let's, with the sidewalk. And all right. We'll do that. Okay, cool. So, so this, I really like this, this idea, like sidewalk, storefront, and then back room. So if you could just explain that a little bit and then maybe how it might apply to, say, a, your typical nonprofit. <clears throat> so the whole concept is that there, there's, there's three pieces to how you might conduct your transactions and, and build your business uh, experiences. Every time I say business, as a nonprofit, just keep thinking the business of being a nonprofit. <clears throat> the sidewalk is, you know, how do you get people to even take notice of what you're doing? And so in some ways, you know, for, because I work in the digital space quite a lot, that could be the quality of your website. It could be just the way, you know, there's a look and feel to it and how people understand or interact with what information you have. Um, I was brought to someone's website, a, a nonprofit's website the other day uh, because they were seeking donations for some, some very, you know, important and necessary cause. And <clears throat> What I saw there was uh, either a really good labor of love by someone who had never touched the internet in their life um, or something that was hastily thrown together as a potential scam. And I couldn't really discern the difference. And so uh, as part of the impact equation, trust is one of the most important ones, of course. And so my trust alarm went off. And so I had to really dig into this person and, and, and try to determine. And as it turned out, of course, as one would hope, it was a very well-meaning person who really could have used some web help. Mm -hmm. um, and so that was their sidewalk. So that was how they tried to get me in and it wasn't going to work. Uh, the storefront, uh, and by the way, your sidewalk could be your, how you do your email list. It could be uh, your business cards. It could be, it's, it's whatever kind of first impression sort of experiences happen to people. Your storefront is how the actual transaction goes down. For instance, I am forever baffled by people who build up a website for donations and make it really hard to find the donate button. Or make it really hard to actually conduct the process. I've had donation processes look like a mortgage uh, application. And, you know, on the other side, I've got places that will let me type three buttons, give them my PayPal, and I'm out. Yep. yep. So, you know, I, I, your storefront, How? And, and by the way, again, it doesn't have to be a business transaction. It could be your storefront could just be getting my name on a list because you need more advocates to go to Congress and, and push for your bill or whatever. So now the back room, from my understanding, is where the relationship is kind of beyond just a one-time donor or even a repeat donor. How would you describe the back room? My friend Shalene Bryan uh, has a, a nonprofit called Skip One, and it's a very sim simple process. You know, skip something that you were going to treat yourself to, like a new handbag, and then the money goes to feeding hungry people. And she's built it to be 100% pass through. So she handles all the administrative costs and all that. And she's gotten really involved in the process. She actually goes to places like Haiti and, you know, does some of the donation work herself and does the, you know, the actual end product work. So it's not, she's a Hollywood per based person who's doing it in a good positive way. Well, so part of what she did as back room type stuff is she's really paying great attention to um, her uh, Rolodex and the relationship she has. So Kirk Cameron's mom, Barbara Cameron, is one of her friends mm. and has access to some different people. So it's, it's kind of one of those deals where you don't use your friends, but if your friend is you know, very much into the cause, <clears throat> then mm. you then you kind of you know work your relationships, and the back room is where a lot of uh, nonprofits go crazy wrong because they just they just miss the, the opportunities. Mark Horvath, who does Invisible People, has a great relationship with Haynes, and it's a buy one get one mm -hmm. right out of right out of Tom's shoes, but you know years before the Tom's shoes mindset, and with something as simple as socks, because it turns out 
homeless people get a lot of food. They don't always get a lot of socks. Hmm. Yeah, they love those freshies. Yeah, you know? so it's a great opportunity. <laughs> And, and it's a beautiful process because you wouldn't normally think of Haynes as a partner for homelessness, and yet it's a great fit. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of it, it seems like almost like just basic people skills. Forget about the internet altogether. You know, you're going to think about like, well, here's somebody who just keeps showing up every year, and they write us a $5,000 check, and they own a car dealership. So how can we take that further so that it's a win for them? That might be a, like a backroom type of partnership. It's complex, John, because I think that it, we're really kind of limited by our, our imagination in a lot of these things. And when you, when you, I just want to highlight when you said about the psychology versus the web stuff, hmm. you know, um, more often than not, we fall into this trap of looking at the tools from the mindset of what the tool can do and not what humans want to do. Hmm. And a lot of times this gets us into trouble because then we sort of, I, I have the weirdest thing to think about with regards to this. You, uh, when the, people train their poodles to walk on their hind legs in little dog circuses, mm -hmm. the poodles never look happy. They're like, okay, I'm on my hind legs, but this, <laughs> isn't, this isn't good. That's what I feel like when I'm made to use technology that doesn't exactly suit my intent. You're right. And, and so I guess, you know, psychology wise, all I'm trying to do, like any marketer or business person tries to do, is uh, eliminate excuses why not. Mm, wow. And that's, you know, that's basic psychology. It just turns out I use tech to make that happen. With, with social media, we can measure, every, it's all ones and zeros. We can measure the heck out of this thing. So then we, I feel like a lot of organizations get gunked down into like measuring everything and then trying to derive some kind of meaning from, you know, the number of retweets on yeah. something, you know? Yeah. Um, but it but it does as you suggest it really rolls back to like the person You know the human being John Let me give you my real baseline measurements that I tell all organizations and there's two of them one is numbers of uh, Subscribers mm -hmm. meaning not followers on Twitter or stuff like that But whoever's on your cold hard email list yep. and then the other one's revenue um, or, or dollars in in this case for donation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't care. How, I don't care what someone's clout score is. I don't care how many times a tweet was seen or sh or spread. I mean, that does help me with one thing. It helps me better understand sentiment. Mm -hmm. And if a certain kind of message goes further than another kind of message, then of course you want to play that message a little longer, a little more often. Mm -hmm. That's in the impact equation. That would be exposure because you'd get more uh, views and more attention of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't. You know, there's a lot, of, there's too many metrics. And like you said, people just get kind of buried in their spreadsheet. And so I guess what I would advocate is something utterly different, which is uh, revenue or donation in and uh, subscribers, because those are two numbers that you can discuss how your efforts to the needles work that out. And then you can back up a little bit and say, well, what are the actions that we can take that move this needle? You know, exactly. And, and it's a whole bunch of things like for donations, it's actually having coffee with someone, yeah. you know. It could be a number of things. So. Sure. And, and um, to that point, I mean, a lot of times I've been brought in on social media campaigns and then given them a very non-social media uh, solution. One of them was uh, they were looking for uh, one of the – it was a dealership and they were saying, we know that for every thousand test drives, we sell this many cars. And they said, so we want more test drives into the funnel. Mm -hmm. what, how can we tweet and get that? And I said, why don't we print a bunch of flyers and stick them under the windshield of non-your vehicle cars? and see if anyone wants to come in for a test drive. And they were yeah. like, oh, and it worked, you know? <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, we can do that? <laughs> you know, not legally, but you can. <laughs> right.